Welcome to the Aquatic Center in St. John, New Brunswick. We're presently carrying on the New Brunswick Provincial Diving Championships. They'll be held Sunday and Monday, May 20th, 21st, 1990. The host club, St. John Fun Day Diving Club, is in attendance. I'm with Becky Rigby. Becky, who are some of the other clubs that are with us uh, during the meet this weekend? Okay, we have from Fredericton, we have the UNB Diving Club. And from Halifax, we have the Cygnus Diving Club. And we have a club from Ontario. They're the Nepean. They're from Ottawa. We have the Moncton Diving Club. And we have our host club, the St. John Fonday Diving Club. Excellent. The events are already underway. Uh, could you just outline where we are in terms of the diving schedule? OK, right now we are on the fourth round of dives. There are 10 rounds. And this is the fourth round, and we're doing inward dives. Most people are doing inwards. I see. And this is Group A and Group B women, and Group A and Group B men. The women are on three-meter springboard, and the men are on one-meter springboard. I see. And I understand there's some new boards in the diving pool this year, uh, cheese boards. Can you tell us a little bit about those? Okay, the cheese boards, we got those in December. They were christened on Friday, and they're... They're different from regular boards as they have little slits, little holes in them. And they make the board springier and it gives the divers more height. And I understand it's the board that's being used across Canada and U.S. in terms of all competitive diving these yeah. days. Yeah. Most competitive teams have the springboard, the cheese board. So it was really bringing us into the same competitive area as, as the other teams throughout Canada. Oh yes, it's really helpful because when you go away to competitions, using the old boards that didn't have the, that weren't as springier, it was hard to get used to the new boards at other competitions. Exactly, you had to start all over again. Yeah, we basically had to learn our dives over again. <laughs> okay, who's this uh, on the board now? Did you catch the name? Okay, on the board is Nick and I think he's doing inward dive. Nick is from the Cygnus Diving Club from Halifax. Okay, that was an inward dive pike and it was done very well. And Nick is in group A. He's in the 16 to 18 group. Yes. And now we have Amy Miller. She's from the Cygnus Diving Club also. And the girls are doing the three meter board and the the men are doing the one meter at this stage. Yes, and tomorrow it'll be switched. The girls will be doing one meter and the guys will be doing the three meter. Okay, that was an inward dive talk and that was done very well. She was just a little loose so she landed a little bit long. And the next diver? Up on the board we have we have Ann. And she did the same dive as, dive as Amy did. She did inward dive tuck. Seemed to do it well? She did it very well. She leaned it off a little bit so she was out further than she should be, but that was very well done. Mm -hmm. I noticed there's a spray of water hitting the water uh, on the pool. What is that for? Okay, that spray of water, it's to make the water move so that when you do your dive, you can see the water because when the water is really still, it's hard to make a difference between the water and the side of the pool. Gives you something to get you get something your eyes to spot. On. Yeah. Lindsay's from the St. John Funday Diving Club. She's from the St. John Funday Diving Club. And she's in group B, which is 14 and 15 girls. And she's doing inward dive pike. That was a beautiful dive. She did that very well. And Lindsay's will be going to the age group nationals in July. Oh, excellent. And, and where are they being held? They're being held in Quebec. Yes. At the Camo Diving Club in Montreal. I understand you're going away this summer as well. Yeah. Where I'll be are you going, going. I'll be going to the nationals with Lindsay. Well, congratulations to you. And Thank I, you. I understand you're going to the summer nationals. You're the first diver from 
this club to to go there in the Atlantic region? I'll be going to the Senior Summer Nationals in Saskatoon, and I'll be leaving tomorrow. Excellent. Okay, that was that was James. He's from the Cygnus Diving Club. He just did a front double pike, and he landed a little bit short, so wasn't quite the dive he probably expected. And James is in Group B? He's in Group B, yes. the 14 and 15 boys. Okay. And this is Jose. She's from the Nepean Diving Club. They came from Ottawa. Okay, that was a front semi with one, front one and a half with one twist. Seemed to be well done as well. It was very well done. She took off leaning out a little bit, so she landed a little bit short. I see. And who do we have diving here? Okay, this is Kyla Lingley. She's from the St. John Fundy Diving Club. Yep. And she's in Group A, 16 to 18. Okay, that was an inward dive pike half twist. Did she over rotate? Uh, um, a what? Bit? Yeah, she she landed a, actually she landed a little bit short, and her twist her twist was a little bit short. She didn't quite make, well, she, she made the half twist, but her dive was a little bit short. I see. And this is Alana, and she's from the UNB Diving Club in Fredericton. Ooh. Okay, that was a front one and a half full twist, and that was very well yes. done. In looking at a dive, Becky, what do you look for? How do you break it down to tell whether it's a good dive or not? Okay, the divers start with a hurdle. If they're doing front dives or reverse dives, they start halfway down the board and they do a walk, which is called a hurdle. And usually they take about three or four steps and they have to get right to the end of the board. And after they get to the end of the board, they take off, and the judges judge them on their takeoff. They judge them on what they do in the air, and they judge them on the entry. And what they judge on the entry is whether or not they have a great amount of splash and what the dive looks like when they go in the water. Mm -hmm. And the, the splash isn't the only thing they're looking for. It's no, only one of those no. components all the yep. way through. They look the at the they... hurdle, and they look at how the dive's done in the air, if they do do the position right and if they have their toes pointed and different little things. Yeah. Okay, this is Colleen and she's from the Cygnus Diving Club in Halifax. Okay, that was a front dive layered half twist. She did that quite well. The twist was nicely done. She just landed a little bit long. Yeah. Created quite a splash. Yeah. Okay, this is Nick and he's from the Cygnus Diving Club. Can the divers choose which dives they're going to be doing, the order of them? Um, most times you can switch around the dives. There's, for this age group, there's 10. Well, the guys do 11, the girls do 10. And there's five compulsories and five optionals for the girls and six for the guys. Mm -hmm. And you, sh you, have, you have to pick one dive from each of the groups. There's front, back, reverse, inward, and twist. And you have to have one of each in compulsories, one of each in optionals, optionals, but you can basically put those in any order in that section, as long as you keep five and then five. When you're diving, do you try and keep your harder dives for the end, or is there any... Yeah, most people do their compulsories first, which are the easier dives. They're hard, but they're the simpler ones. And then they put their optionals, which are more aggressive dives and more somersaults, more twists at the end. Build up towards yeah. that, make yeah. sure they're they're in a groove on the easier, yeah. more basic dives. Sort of like a little warm up almost. Yeah. yeah. Well I think your legs came. Yeah, that there. was Sarah. She did a front dive left of twist and that dive was incomplete. She's not going to get scores for that because she didn't complete the twist. Okay. She only did about a quarter twist when she should have done a half. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, this is Anne. She's from the St. John Diving Club. She did a front dive layout half twist also. She piked a little bit in that, but it was very well done. Seemed to uh, break a bit at, on her entry. Yeah. Her, her body collapsed a bit. Well, actually, if I can remember correctly, she just started learning that dive not too long ago. Well, so that's, that's very, that's well done for her. Excellent. Okay, and this is Lindsay Black. She's from the St. John Diving Club. And she's doing the same dive and just did a front dive layout half twist. was a gorgeous dive and she what she did is when she went in her entry she ripped it yes and a rip is what we give is the name we give to a dive that has basically no splash it's almost like you're ripping the water and you seem to see more and more of that in the the competitions now is, is there a technique that divers are learning or are we just there's different techniques. The there's one. Te there's one thing. It's called a swim. Is when you usually have your arms together when you hit the water, and then you bring them apart, and it brings a splash down with you. Mm -hmm. But there, there are many techniques to do yes. that. Basically, going in the water straight. With yeah. Your toes pointed is going in the water straight and, and tight body really helps. Yeah. And taking the dive down and different things. And in diving, we have three positions. Oh, well, actually four. We have layout dive, which is your body's all straight. And we have a pike dive where your body's straight, but then you bend, bend at the waist. Yes. And you have a tuck, which you bring your knees up to your chest. And then we have a free position, which is usually used for twists. And that's basically, you can do any position in that. You can start out layout and then be pike. It's just, m most times that's just for twists. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Okay, that was a front two and a half somersault top, and that was very well done. Yes. Five and a half to seven were scores. Those are very good scores. Yeah. In those positions, the the straight where the body is totally extended and going around the air is is always an impressive one. Oh yes, it's yeah. they're nice dives to watch. Yeah. Okay, this is Kata from the St. John Pondy Diving Club, and she's doing the same dive that shows he did it, just did a front two and a half tuck. She got very good height on that. Yes, yeah, she did. Good. She she did that very well. She's just learning that dive also. Well, that's good. So I'm sure she's pleased with that yeah. dive. It's one you like to get out of the way when you're just yes. starting to learn it. You'd almost want to do the optionals first because th those are the harder dives and you kind of want to get those over with. But This is Alana. This is Alana French. Were you able to catch the dive she's doing? I think she's doing a two and a half pike, front two and a half pike. Well done. She was a little piked on the takeoff, so when she hit the water, she didn't extend fully, but it was a nice dive. Yeah. I've seen Alana dive that one better. In oh, yeah. Yep, she'll be disappointed with it, although it was a good dive. Well, she's she's been out. This year hasn't been good for her. She's been out with an ear infection. Has she? So she has, she's just basically starting to really come out now. Mm -hmm. But she had problems, so she wasn't competing a whole lot. So she's doing very well. Okay, this is Kathy from Halifax, and she's doing front two and a half tuck. Okay, she just came out a little bit early, but that was a nice dive. Yes, it seems the Halifax divers are growing in numbers and ability. Oh, the club's getting yeah. really big. They've got a nice pool yep. in Halifax, the Dalplex. And yep, they train at the Dal. And their coaches are Dave Duncan and Bob Pro. And this is Colleen, she's also from the Halifax Diving Club.
่ะscoops his back, that could cause more splash than if he went down and did a little somersault or went straight down with a straight body. Mm -hmm. So even that's part of the, the technique of Even the underwater yeah. is, helps the dive. Okay, that was a front one and a half tack, and she kind of jumped that out a little bit, so when she landed, she landed long. Yes. Certainly wasn't going to have any problem with contacting the end of the board on that dive. No. Okay, <laughs> this is Anne. <laughs> I noticed the diver behind Anne, Lindsay, is practicing her dive on dry land. That seems to be a frequent, and Anne's doing it now herself. Yeah, the divers practice the dive on the land so that they get the feel for what the dive's, the <coughs> position, and they just, they get the feeling for what they're going to do. Working on the land and doing the, the dive in your mind really helps you get a feel for it. That you, you've got to focus and yep. concentrate on nothing else but the dive that you're going to be doing no. next. You just concentrate on the dive, you don't think of anything else. This is Lindsay, and she's doing inward one half pike. And I guess she thought she must have been doing another dive before that, because she didn't seem to recognize the dive. I think she was well, expecting to do a different dive. Uh, will that throw you off? If uh, well, it might throw her off a little bit, because she she was preparing for a different dive. But that was a gorgeous dive. She did that very well. She's talking to the to yeah. her coach, I think, saying, yeah. why, why did we put that one in? Yeah, well, she, that's the dive she's supposed to do, I think. But I don't think she was expecting to do that right then. There is a tremendous amount of uh, responsibility in filling out your dive sheets before the meet begins, isn't there? It's oh, yes. a very important step. You have to make sure you put down the correct dive. And then there's a, a number you have to put down. It's called the DD. It's yes. the degree of difficulty. And your scores are multiplied by this number to give you your score, your total score. And you have to have that correct number down. And we have a panel that goes over the numbers, and they make sure it's all done right. Mm -hmm. But yes, you have to make sure you get down the right dive, because some people put the wrong dive down, and then they have to get up there and try that dive. <laughs> After and that sometimes, spending. yeah, sometimes they've never done the dive, so we try to get our right dives put down. Yeah. Be similar to a golfer who would put down the, the wrong score and uh, he'd lose his round. Yeah. You, but you lose the dive if you yeah. go up and you can't perform the dive you've written down. Oh, that's the, I like that straight. Yeah, that's a, that's a really straight. nice dive. That's a back one half layout. She landed a little bit short, but that layout is a really nice position to watch. Yeah. Must be very difficult uh, with these girls and boys when they're, they're growing because the, the length of their body keeps changing and their center of gravity and uh, 
keep oh. adjusting the revolutions which is very difficult. A lot of times the around 13 or 14 the divers go and they almost have to learn the dives over again because they're it's they get uncoordinated and it's hard to do the dive. I've seen people trip down the board. <laughs> it's quite funny. <laughs> but it's hard when they grow to they have to get used to everything again. Yeah. Okay, this is Lana French. Difficult. Oh, uh, that's a very high DD degree of difficulty. She did that quite well. She, was, she just didn't have quite enough height to kick out, but she was straight up and down. Yes. She couldn't fully extend her body, but she was straight. Okay, this is Marty. She just did a back one and a half pike. And she did that quite well. She leaned it a little bit and then a little bit short though. Yep. Legs were a little bit apart. Yeah. Okay, Kathy's doing back one and a half tuck. And again, this is the, the back dive component of yep. their requirements. Most of them have done their front component, now this is back. That was a really nice dive. She just she came out a little bit too late and landed long. I had an opportunity to dive off the three meter board last year when we had the open house at the aquatic center. Yes, we had the parents diving. Yeah, it's a long way up there. <laughs> and a long way down. <laughs> And we're going to have talk, and that was really nice. Yes, good dive. She's getting some applause for that one. Yeah. This is Nick. Yep. And I think he's doing a back one and a half tuck. That was a really nice dive. Yes. He landed that straight up and down. His tuck didn't appear to be as tight as some of the other tucks. Is that... Uh... Well, he, he didn't grab the front of his legs. He grabbed behind. I see. So he, could, he didn't get as tight as he should have. Yes. But still a good dive and yep. landed well. <laughs> now that, what went wrong there, Becky? What's the... Uh... Um, that's Amy. She, I'm not sure if she was supposed to be doing just a back semi or if she was trying to do a back one and a half. And she just, she landed on her back. Yes. Okay, she was doing a back semi-tuck. And she had a lot of height. And she held on a little bit too long. And therefore, she landed on her back. Mm -hmm. Most wipeouts like that hurt for a while. But she'll probably be okay after 
Yeah. A little bit. Good stuff. It's because uh, obviously she was in pain. Yeah. See, that was Sarah, and she did it just did it back. So I mean, tack. Some pools have bubblers, Becky, and uh, can you tell me a little bit about those? Okay, the bubblers are a machine. They're, they're hooked up, and they're under the water. And when a diver does a dive, usually when they're trying a new dive or if they're doing a really hard dive, what they do is they have a little button that's hooked up, and they press it, and the machine compresses air, and it makes all bubbles. And when the diver does the dive and they land in the water, it doesn't hurt as much as if they landed just in regular water. It makes it a little softer. That breaks the, the levelness of the, the surface yeah. and it's uh, it's used for practice, I suppose. Yeah, they you use can't, it in competition no, at all? you can't use it in competition, it's just for practice. I understand that uh, this aquatic center in St. John has the, the uh, set up for a bubbler, it's just a matter of yeah, acquiring we, the funding to get the machine. We have part of it that's already hooked up at the bottom of the pool, and I think the only part we need, we need a compressor. Yes. And then we can use our bubbler. But as you said, we need funding to pay for that. Yeah. Okay, Lindsay, she just did a reverse semi pike. It was a gorgeous pike. She ripped the water, but she had her hands up. Yes. And with your hands up, you can only get a maximum of four and a half. So most, I think most of the scores she got four and a half, but whereas she would have regularly got maybe six, six and a half. Divers have to be careful that little things like that they have to remember to do. And where should her hands have been? Her hands should have been down by her side. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is James. And he just did a reverse one and a half tuck. And it was a very nice top. He just landed a little bit short. Came out a little bit too early. Legs were, were bent on entry. Yeah, he didn't have time to kick out of it. But a very difficult thing to do to be jumping forward and then rotating in the opposite yeah, direction. It's called a reverse dive, and it's, it's a hard dive to do. Yes. You have to make sure you jump it out. was show saying she did a reverse one and a half tuck and it was very well done it was yes. nice kick it okay, Kyle is doing a reverse summy tuck And again, she lost it at the end. Okay. That was quite surprising to see her. It was. She she jumped it up very well. It's just she held on a little bit too long, and therefore she she got scared, and she thought she was going to land on her back, and that's why she did what she did. Yes. But most of those divers that did those, like Amy that land on her back, most of them will probably be doing one and a half soon. Add another half somersault so they'll land on their head. Yes. And then it's difficult to, to stop your rotation at a less difficult dive, isn't it? Yeah. When you have to come back and do yeah. the easier ones. You really have to spot, like watch. As you're doing your dive, you watch the ceiling and the side, and you, you spot, you look for the water. And that's usually how you try to land straight up and down. That was Alana. Did a very good dive, scores of mid-five. Okay, this is Marty, and she's from Fredericton. And she did a reverse semi tuck, and that was very nice done. She just she twisted a little bit on it, but otherwise it was nicely done. Has she been competing for long? I don't think she's been competing too long. Maybe a year, maybe close between a year, maybe two. There seem to be a lot of new divers coming into the the sport these days. Yeah, a lot of them are starting nowadays. A lot of them are gymnasts. A lot of the gymnasts come in and s quit gymnastics and start diving when yes. they decide they don't want to do gymnastics anymore. Diving's quite similar in the somersaults and 
things like that. As a matter of fact, you pretty well have to, to have that gymnastics capability to dive these days. Well, you don't have to have been a gymnast, but the capability that a gymnast has, like being able to somersault and things like that are needed. Yes. That was Colleen, and she did a back one and a half somersault with a half twist. And she leaned that out quite a bit. That's one of her newer dives. Yes. How often would these uh, competitive divers practice, Becky? Um, it depends. Different clubs practice different times. In our club, we have groups that practice eight hours, eight times a week, mm -hmm. and we have groups that practice four or five, and then less. And then other teams are basically the same. Some have a little bit more, some have a little bit less. Okay, that was Nick, and he just did a reverse one-half tack, and that was very well done. He landed a little bit short, though, and that brought up some splash. So you would have uh, eight practices a week, and that would a couple of hours each practice? You're, you're well, that includes uh, maybe an hour and a half or so in the water with some conditioning beforehand, stretching, and some couple of the practices are just dry land. Yes. Are just on the ground doing conditioning, like push-ups, stuff like that. It's quite a commitment, but the divers I talk to, they all seem to enjoy it. It is a commitment, and but most of them that do really enjoy it. You have to, to come that many times a week. Yes. She just did an inward one and a half talk and she did very nice. Yes. Sarah's in group B. Yeah, she's 14 to 15 age group. Okay, this is Anne. And she's doing reverse summy talk. She's from the St. John Funday. She's from the St. John Funday. I did a dive like that once myself. <laughs> she did the same thing Carla did a little earlier. She did the somersault, but she had she didn't come out quite as early as she should have, and therefore she landed a little bit long. The leg goes out to stop further rotation. Yeah, it, it's almost like a natural reaction that you put your leg out so that either stop or you think you're going to wipe out. And this is Lindsay Black. Inward pike half twist, and that was very well done. She did that beautifully. <laughs> there are five judges. Yep, there are five judges, and they judge from a range of zero to ten. And each judge gives a score, and then they drop the highest score and the lowest score, and then they multiply that. that they add up the three that are left over and multiply that by the degree of difficulty, and that's the score for each dive. Yes. And I understand that in order to be on the, the age group national team, you have to score a certain level of points on the dives that you do at, at various age levels. Okay, in each age group, there's a set score for each uh, board. There's a different one for one meter, three meter tower. And a diver has, all the dives they do have to add up to a certain score. And if they get the score that's, that's been set out by the nationals, then they can go to that national competition. Okay, Jose, she just did an inward, one, she did an inward double tack. And she did it gorgeous. It was 
awesome dodge. She landed straight up and down, and she must have had her feet flat, because when she was on the side, she was rubbing her feet. <laughs> but what happened is she had her feet flat, and it brought all the splash, and she had a big bubble. And that, that's not considered a splash, that's a rip. Yes. And sh her feet were hurting because she landed flat-footed, but that brought the splash down, so that was good. <laughs> I think she was pleased with that dive. Yes, she looked to be very pleased. I think more relieved. Just Feet first dives are hard dives to land straight up and down and bring the splash down with you. Hand first are easier to rip. Got to really point those toes. Oh, yeah. There's Alana. She just did a back one and a half with a half twist, and it was really nice and high. She just landed a little bit long. Probably the result of not as much practice this year as she's been doing in that, previous years. Yeah. Marty and she did an inward one half tuck. It was a really nice tuck. She just didn't have quite enough height to extend her legs fully, so she was a little bit tucked on the entry. No. Didn't get as much height at the beginning of the dive no. as some of the other dives she's done already today. Yep. It's really an important part of the dive, I understand, and yet uh, there's so many other things they have to think about when oh, they're on the board. Oh, there's many sometimes things. Sometimes you forget the that very basic one of getting as much power as you can when you leave the board. The divers have to remember to keep their bodies tight. They have to remember to swing their arms. Most times you want to get your arms over your head before you take off the board. So you have to swing your arms really fast. And There's lots of things you have to remember. Okay, Kathy just did an inward one half tuck and she leaned it out a little bit so she was quite far out and landed a little bit short. Do the, uh, is that one of the things that the judges will take points away for because you are too far from the board? Yes, they will. If you're too far from the board or you're just a little bit too close, they may deduct points. Even if you're close? Yeah, if you're too close to the board, you may scare the judges and they might deduct for that. If you hit the board, you get a maximum of four and a half for that die. But the judges don't want to encourage people coming too close to the board, so that's yeah. why they bring the scores down a little bit. Okay. Who's on the board here? Yeah. This is Colleen, she's from the Singles Diving Club, and I think she's trying a new dive that maybe she has just learned, and she's getting encouragement from the audience, from her team. Is there a time period uh, that she has to initiate the dive and complete it from the time she steps in um, I'm not sure what it is, but I, there is a time period. She's really having problems, isn't yeah, she? Yeah, I think she's really nervous. Yeah. Were you able to catch the dive she's doing? I think it would be a reverse one and a half. Yeah, she's got 10 seconds to do the dive. That's that's difficult, isn't it? Yeah, that's difficult. Um, I don't think she's done the dive before, and that's hard to do a new dive in the competition. Yeah. So she decided not to try the dive, and she'll get zero for her score for that dive. But it's better to, to have it happen early on in a regional competition. And yeah, it's better to for her t to do that now than to do that at a competition like nationals or something. Yes. It's all part of the, the experience and can't always do okay. things the first time. Okay, that was Nick. He did a l awesome inward sunny, but he had his arms up and so he got a maximum of four and a half. That was similar to what Lindsay did yeah. earlier on. 
He had a straight body. He went in straight up and down. No splash, but because his arms were up, he didn't get that score he probably wanted. And who is this? This is Amy Miller. She's from Halifax. And she just did an inward dive pike half twist. And it was gorgeous pike. She did. She made the twist. She was just a little bit short on the dive. When you say short, what are you referring to? Okay, when the diver does a front or an in, uh, inward dive, when the di diver goes long, they're usually landing on their back. And when the diver goes short, they're usually landing on their stomach. Okay. And on the back or reverse, it's the opposite. A long is on the stomach and short is on the back. And then when they're straight up and down, they're straight up and down. Okay, that's Anne, and what she was doing, she was fixing the fulcrum, yeah. she was moving it back and forth, and that changes the spring of the board, and some divers don't want too much spring for some dives, but for some dives you may want a lot of spring. Okay, she just did an inward one half tuck, and that was really well done, she, she landed a little bit on her legs. But that's quite a new dive for her. And I think that's the first time she's competed it. She'll be happy with it then. Yeah. The divers would change the the area of the fulcrum each each dive, I presume, depending on back, front. Well, a lot of times, any time the diver is doing the hurdle walking down the board, it's usually the same. And when they're doing a back, like Lindsay's doing, it's usually the same for the back or the inward. I see. Sometimes the divers do change it for each dive, though. That was Lindsay, and that was a gorgeous back one and a half layout. It was a little bit long, but that was that was a good dive for her. Yes. She had lots of height. Again, that layout position is a beautiful yes, position to watch. We've had the, the fulcrum adjusted a couple of times here, obviously, wanting just to get it yeah. perfect. Well, if the fulcrum's not right, you don't catch the board, and then it's hard to perform the dive the way you're used to doing it. Okay, that was a front two and a half tuck, and that's a hard dive on the one meter board. Very so difficult. as you can see, there's not much room to do the dive. He scored uh, in the twos and threes for that, and he just... Okay, for that dive, that's not too bad. He, a dive like that has a high DD, yes. so it'll bring up his score more. Okay, there's a problem on the score table, so they're waiting, and Jose is... I think relieving a bit of the pressure. Yeah. It's hard when the diver gets up there and you're, re you're ready to go, and then they ask you to stop for a minute and yep. you have to keep your spirit up. Okay, that was a back one and a half summy with one and a half twist and that was really nice. Very good dive. Okay, Kyle's going to do a front dive layout half twist. She made the twist, but in the air, she was supposed to lay out and keep her body straight, but she piked it during the dive. And so she'll get marked lower because she changed position. Almost uh, as if she headed out and, and had to, to make the move quickly to, to get her twist. Yeah, sometimes if the dive, if you don't get the right takeoff, you can't do the dive well. Yes. So they switch, the, they'll do the position so that they can land it. Yeah. This is Alana. Did you catch her dive, Becky? No, I didn't hear.
Okay, that was supposed to be reverse one and a half top. And she landed that a little bit short. And she made it around onto her head and she got scores. Yes. And she arched her back. It. Uh, she arched her back because when she was coming around, she, in the air, she knew she wasn't going to make it. Yes. So she arched her back to try to get her head in first before her feet because if she had her feet in first, she wouldn't have got a score on that dive. And I would say it would make it less painful on contact yes. in the water to have your back arched like that. As well, well, actually, it sometimes it makes it worse when you arch right? your back. It yeah. hurts the back more. Okay, Marty just did a full twisting, one twist with one and a half somersaults. And I think that's a fairly new dive for her. Very difficult dive. It is. I think she's happy to have it over with. It looked really good right I think she's happy that she did it. Yes. Okay, Kathy just did the same dive, and she did, she landed a little bit long in the sun. I mean, she, I think she did a little bit more twists than she should have, so her scores were down. And her legs seemed to come Her apart. legs were apart. Yeah. And that really throws the rest of your body out of yeah. sync. Yeah, because when you're used to doing with your legs together, and she brings her legs apart, it throws you off. Okay, Colleen just did a reverse semi talk and it was very nice time. She just had her arms up. Nick's doing a front semi and he's putting one twist on it and it'll land on his feet. Sorry, he was doing a full twisting one and a half. Very difficult dive. It is a very difficult dive on one meter. Most of the options that divers do on one meter are quite difficult because they don't have that room to do, they don't have as much room as they would on three meter. So actually the, the dive is really easier on a three meter board doing the same dive because you have more time to execute. A lot of times it is. Sometimes it's not as easy because you have more room, so you have to spot with your eyes to yeah. see where the water is. The problem of over-rotation as opposed to... Under-rotation. Yes, as you were saying earlier. Okay, this is the last round of dives. They've done nine rounds, and now they're on their tenth. Okay, she just did a reverse semi tuck and she just landed a little bit too short. She landed a little bit on her stomach. And this is Anne. Okay, Anne's doing the inward dive pike with a half twist. Anne's in the B group, 14 to 15. Yep. Notice she's getting some bounce in the board. Just gets a bit of a rhythm going. Yes, yeah, she was bouncing the board to get the board going so that she could ride it. Okay, Lindsay's doing a front two and a half somersault pike position. Degree of difficulty 2.4. And that's quite high difficulty. I hear some fans calling Yeah, we out. have Come people on, cheering her on. Does that distract you or does that help you when you're doing Well, sometimes it gets your it? mind going and gets you wound up and you get the energy to do the dive, it helps. Good stuff. She's really concentrating. 
Yeah, you have to concentrate on these dives. And again, short. Just a bit short. Yeah, it was a good top. It was a really nice pike. She just didn't quite have the room that she wanted to have. And therefore, she landed a little bit on her stomach. Okay, James just did a front summy with two twists, and he landed the twist very well. He was just a little short in his summy, and he had his hands to the side. But that's a hard dive. Very difficult. He was doing a lot of things in the air on that one. Yeah, he did two twists, and that's, when you're twisting that many twists, sometimes you can get lost. You forget where you are. Okay, this is Nick, and I think this is either a new dive for him, or he may have even put the wrong dive down, and he has to perform that dive. Yes, he seemed to be talking to the, the judges about this one. Yeah. that on one meter or like in a competition because that's a real difficult dive to spot the entry and to land it straight so most people don't do that yes and but for the guys they have to do 11 dives whereas the girls only do 10 and so he usually the guys put in one extra dive so sometimes they just throw in a dive like that that's different Excellent. Becky, I think uh, we've completed the women's uh, three meter group A and B and the for the men, the one meter group A and B. It looks like there's, there's going to be a break now, so we're going to break for a public service message. Okay. We'll see you soon. Yep.